Okay, back for part two of the uh, assembly of a dinosaur rocketry strato dart kit. So this will be the radio installation part. So I have a couple of things. I've got a receiver. This is a Spectrum AR400. I've got a small single cell LiPo. This is a, uh, a 500 milliamp hour single cell LiPo. I've got a little adapter wire. This wire has a JST on one end that fits the battery and the other end is the same uh, plug that goes into a receiver that will power the receiver from the, the lithium cell. Grayson Hobbies sells these little adapter wires for a dollar. I've got two servo extensions. They're, these are 12 inch. You may need 18 inch depending on the model and how long your servo wires are. I've got two servos. These are um, HS65HB servos from high tech. Uh, they're a good servo and they have good centering. They're a little more expensive than some other servos, but um, I, I trust them and they're not very heavy. Um, I've taken the uh, servo arms off of the servos and I've got the long servo arms that come with the servos with the small holes and those will fit the uh, push rod wires. Got the screws there. I've got a little bit of uh, Velcro for the battery and the receiver. And I've got some little clippers, an X-Acto knife, and I've got my radio. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've set up my model. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you set up your transmitter for this particular model with delta mixing. What that's going to do is mix elevator and aileron. And so you're going to use the two channels in your receiver. One servo is going to go to aileron, one's going to go to elevator, and then the radio is going to mix them together. Um, in addition, I've gone in and on my flap switch, I can go into the flap uh, setting in here if you enable flaps and it allows you to put in trim for the elevator when you move the flap switch. So I put a little bit of down trim for elevator when the flap switch is in the upper position. That will be my boost setting. And then when I move the flap switch to land or the down setting, I'm putting up elevator um, for the nose heavy condition for when it's gliding. So that way I don't need to be playing around with the trim lever. So, first thing I'm going to do is bind the receiver. So, I've got my little bind plug here, and I'm going to plug that into the uh, bind plug in on the um, on the receiver. The receiver comes with a little bind plug that shorts those two connections. Then I'm going to plug in my uh, battery adapter wire. I'm going to plug that into the uh, rudder channel. It can be plugged into the any any channel that's open. I just plug it into the rudder one because it's a little bit further away from the the um, aileron elevator channels and allows me to plug and unplug things. So I'm going to plug that in and the receiver should be flashing quickly. Then I'm going to push in on the button on the back of the transmitter and turn it on and that's going to talk to the receiver and eventually the light here in the receiver is going to come on solid and that says okay I'm set up to talk to the transmitter now on channel number model number 11 and so I'll unplug the receiver pull the bind plug out and I'm going to plug the receiver back in again just to make sure that should think for about five seconds and then come on solid. That tells me yes. The receiver is listening to that channel. Then I'm going to take the uh, servos and I'm going to plug in a, an extension into each one. So these servo wires have a black wire, so you just need to make sure that the polarity is the same. Black lines up with black. The plugs only go in one way. Okay, and then I'm going to take my two servos, I'm going to plug one into the elevator channel. These plugs are a little snug. And the other one into aileron. I'll do a quick check here. I'm going to look at the servos. You can't really see this on a video, but I'm going to see when I go elevator and aileron that the servos are moving. Okay, we'll check direction here in a second. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
put the long servo arm onto one of the servos. Now, sometimes these splines on the servos aren't completely symmetric, so I try to put the arm on so that it's completely perpendicular to the uh, to the servo. So you can see it move here a little bit. And the reason I do that now is because sometimes they're not symmetric and if you put it on it'll be offset a little bit one way or the other and then you've got to use trim to, uh, to zero it. So yeah, see this one you can tell, I don't know if you can see it, is a little bit crooked. So I'll take it off and flip it around 180 degrees and put it on and now you can see it's more or less perpendicular to the servo. Okay, so I have my model over here. I'm going to flip that upside down for reference later. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the servo movement. So these servos are going to be underneath the model, sitting here like this, one on each side. You want the wires facing forward so that they're as long as possible. And my servo extensions are set up so that they just come outside the end of the body tube so that I can unplug them and plug them in when I'm hooking things up. So they just need to be long enough. So you just need to check your servo wires and make sure that they're long enough to fit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the movement of the servos. So I'm going to move the elevator stick back and forward. So since these are on the bottom of the model, when you move the elevator stick down, that's up elevator, you want it to push the elevators up. So these silver arms, since they're on the bottom, need to go this way to push the elevators up when you go down. So you can see that's going the wrong way. So I'm going to flip them around this way and see if they're right. Okay, so they're both going away, which is going to push the elevator up. Now I'm going to check right aileron, and I know, because I've done this a lot, if I do right aileron, this one that's on the right wing, it's going to be the underside of the right wing, if I go right aileron, that's going to want to make the right aileron go up, or the elevon, so that it makes it roll to the right. So I know that I've got these moving the right way. So the one that's on the right side as um, would be on the underside of the right wing. When you pull back will go toward the rear of the model. When you go right it'll go toward the rear of the model. The ones on the left will go toward the rear of the model. When you go up elevator and away from the rear of the model when you go right aileron because the aileron movement is going to be opposite. So I know that's right side up now. That's Those are working. And if those don't work then you can swap inputs into the uh, receiver, uh, swap aileron and elevator inputs, or you can go into your model here and change the servo direction. So I know that I need to reverse aileron and elevator to get this to work right. So I've already gone in here and done that. So I have those on reverse. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little clippers and I'm going to carefully clip the bottom part that servo arm off so that when I put it on it's not in the way. And when I clip the other one off. Okay. And then I'm going to clip off the little tabs that are on the servos because I'm not going to use those. I'm going to glue the servos down to the wing. And the reason I do that is because it's lighter weight and um, I used to use the servo tape, which is a double back tape, um, but that gets soft when it gets really hot, and uh, I don't like that. So I glue the servos directly onto the airplane. And if you ever have a problem with a servo, you just take a, a, a razor blade and you just slice it off, and uh, you can glue a new servo on. Okay, so now I'm going to go in here and put my screw back in because that'll keep the uh, Suvaro arm from coming off. Again, those don't need to be super snug. They're not going anywhere. It just needs to keep the uh, servo arm from sliding off of the splines. Okay. So I'm double checking my directions again. That's still right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the servo and using the outermost arm, I'm going to connect it. 
going to wiggle back and forth to get it on the little Z bend that's on the push rod here. And then rotate it around. And this is going to sit just like that. I'm going to take the other one and do the same thing. So you can see I'm going from the top side of the servo arm, I'm putting the push rod in and then rotating it around so that the wires are facing forward, the servos are next to the airframe, and the push rod has a nice straight line. The servo could be on the other side if you want. Um, it doesn't really matter, it just sticks out a little bit more and your wire is going to have to go a little farther to hide it inside the body tube, so it means you're going to need a little longer extension. So, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue those puppies in place. So, what you can do is you can tape the surface even, or you can just use your eye and do it. So now I made sure that the servo is clean, there's no oil on it. And the radio is still on, mind you. And I'm putting some of that same foam safe CA onto my servo. I'm putting the servo right next to the body tube and I'm making sure when I push it down that the surface is perfectly even. And we'll look from the side and say, yep, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to take a little super glue here, a little of that foam safe still. Just put a little on both sides. You don't want to get any into the splines. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of the uh, accelerator to keep it in place. And then I'm going to do the other side. So I'm putting a little super glue on there. Okay. I'm going to make sure my surface is straight and even. I'm going to push my servo down, kind of wiggle it. Wiggle it as I push down. You can wiggle it a little bit and get a little bit of uh, adjustment. So again, you want that push rod perfectly straight. got a little time before it sets. Okay. So I've got the slip. Okay, so I've got the surface straight, pushing my servo down, making sure the uh, push rod is nice, has a nice straight line to it. Now I'll put a little more around the bottom. It's just enough to, uh, it's not a lot. You don't want it, you don't want it seep, seeping into the electronics. Just a little squirt. You don't want to get a lot of this stuff on the servo. So just enough to, uh, to lock the servo in place and kind of wiggle it. Make sure it's not going anywhere. Okay, so now I'm going to look at the edge. Say, okay, yeah, that looks pretty clean. That looks good. So I'm going to look at the end of the model. And when I pull back on the stick, both are going up and forward. Both are going down. Right, the right one goes up. Left one goes down. Left is the opposite. And I put a little bit of down trim. Here's my down trim. Just ever so slightly. And then up trim for glide is about a quarter inch or so. So... I've got those. So that's the radio install. Pretty simple. Now I'm going to unplug it. And I'm going to unplug the two servos. And turn my transmitter off. So now what we need to do is we need to route the servo wire into the body tube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to make a little slot about an eighth of an inch long up and down
and then So I made a little slot right next to the servo. Then I'm going to make the slot about a half an inch long or so. Just long enough for the length of the plug. Okay, now I'm just doing this freehand. Okay, so now what I do is I get my knife in there and I pull this little tab out. So you can see that. So I've got a little cardboard tab that I've pulled out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed my servo wire in there. I'm going to feed it in and aim it so that hopefully it goes toward the front. Okay. And you can't see me doing this, but it's a little awkward. Okay, so now I get to the plug where the adapter is, and I put that in there. So all we're doing is we're just routing the servo wires inside the body all the way up to the front. I got a little, little twist in the wire, and it doesn't really do anything, it just kind of bothers me, so I'm going to untwist it here. In. Okay, and then I can push that little flap of cardboard material, pushed it a little too far. Push that little flap of cardboard material just even with the surface, and I can put a little bit of CA on there and that'll that'll seal that up. And um, you won't even really see it. So I'm going to shake the model now off camera and show that I've got my wire sticking out the front now. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Make my little slot. And cut my little tab about a half an inch long. Stick my knife in there and peel it out. Okay. There's my little tab. I'm going to take the other wire and do the same thing. Just feed it all the way to the front. Now, if it turns out your uh, wires are a little short, you may have to get a little bit longer, like an 18 inch uh, servo extension to reach all the way up to the front. Okay, so I have the wire in there. Shake it to make sure. I'm just shaking the model down. That sort of uses momentum to get the uh, servo wire to come all the way up. Okay, now I can look and I can see that I've got both servo wires all the way up in the front. here. Just kind of push that little tab down nicely that I cut out. I'm going to put a little CA on the tab, not on the uh, servo wire itself. You may need to pull that out later. And hit it with just a little foam safe CA and I've sealed up that little hole in the wire and you don't even really see that anymore. Unless you're looking really close. Okay, so now I'm going to turn my radio back on and plug in my receiver. And now I'm going to go remember. Now, if you're smart, you could have gone and um, figured out uh, which uh, plug in is for aileron and elevator and written that on the plug before you unplug them with a little uh, Sharpie or something. I'm not smart enough to do that, so I'm just going to plug it in and check. So I know that one is not aileron because that's going the wrong way. Okay, so put that in. 
in. Let's double check it in the direction. Okay, that's the right way. And the other one. Okay, so I'm just going to check my direction again. Up, down, right, left, glide, boost, and there we go. Okay. So, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little Velcro on the bottom of the receiver. And put the other Velcro, pull the tape off. On top of that piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this receiver up in there so that the receiver is on the top underside of the model. And the reason I'm doing that is that gets it out of the way. I should see if I have a tool here. I've got some little uh, forceps, so I'm going to grab that. I'm going to push that in. You want that in about two inches or so. Far enough in there that the shoulder of the nose cone isn't going to hit the wires. And your battery wire needs to be long enough to go into the nose cone, so when you take the nose cone out, you can unplug it, and that's how you turn it on and off. And then I'm going to take the receiver wire in here. I'm going to route that in. The Spectrum, this is a full range receiver, so it's got uh, a short antenna and a long antenna. So I'm going to route the long antenna down in toward the back of the model. Okay, so my long antenna is routed in there in the back of the model. I've got my receiver sitting in there, about two inches back from the end, and my wire is dangling there. Then I'm going to put a little Velcro on the bottom of the battery. I'll stick that right there. And then a little battery inside the, a little Velcro inside the uh, shoulder of the nose cone. And I'm going to show how that's going to sit. So now the battery is just going to Velcro inside the bottom of the nose cone. And when you slide the nose cone on, then the battery's in the nose cone, and now you turn it on and off is just you unplug or plug in the battery. And I'm going to double check my, uh, my wing position here again. So I'm just making sure that's up. That's right, left, and I've got my glide position, and my boost position, which is just ever so slightly down, maybe an eighth of an inch. And so you can tweak those with your uh, with your settings. So you want to check the the control movements. So the uh, elevator is around an inch up or down and the aileron is a half to three quarters. It doesn't need quite as much roll since it's a fairly short wingspan. Um, more elevators better for flare when you uh, are landing when it's a little bit nose heavy. So that is it for the radio install. So you can see the bottom of the model. It's very clean. Just the two servos are sticking out there. Nothing left to do. You can put your markings on. You can paint it if you want. If you're going to paint, I'd tape over the servo and the servo arms so no paint gets into the electronics there. Um, you don't need to paint it, you can leave it white. I just don't want to get it too wet. Um, you may want to put a colored stripe of uh, like a red or yellow material on the bottom uh, to help you with orientation uh, when you're getting used to it, um, if that helps you figure out which side is, is up. And um, the only thing really left to do, I'm going to unplug the battery now, The only thing left to do now is to uh, balance the model. And so the way you do that is you'll read where the balance point is in the instructions. And you're going to put in your loaded motor into the back of the model. And then you're going to balance the model. So you can do that on your fingertips aren't very accurate. Um, but you can, uh, you can do that first pass. What I do is I take a, uh, a vise with two pencils or two uh, barbecue skewers sticking up and you can take a little bit of that spare foam, make a little square and push that onto the uh, barbecue skewer so it doesn't damage or dent the wing. And then you'd mount the model upside down on two skewers 
and look at where it balances. So you're going to compare the uh, you're going to compare the balance point with a loaded motor with a battery in it ready to fly. You're going to balance it so that it's level or just slightly nose down for boost, and then um, that'll be the right setting. So you want to make sure that you have your heaviest loaded motor in the back when you do that because that'll be the most tail heavy. So uh, you just Look in the instructions, figure out where the balance point should be. On most of the models, it's near where the joint is in the uh, tube, but you want to double check. And uh, make a couple of marks on your wing out from the body tube, but that's where it should balance, and then you balance the model. And if you need to add a little nose weight, uh, lead weight is included. You can clip that into small pieces. Make sure it goes down all the way to the tip of the nose so that you're adding as little weight as possible. You want it as far forward as you can. And then once it's balanced, then you can uh, use a little uh, foam safe CA and just dribble that down inside to uh, make sure that the lead weight isn't going to fall out. Um, if it turns out, which is not common, um, but it may turn out that you're too nose heavy, if you use a little heavy receiver, a little bit heavier battery, um, that you're nose heavy uh, for boost. If that's the case, then you can take your lead weight and just stick a little underneath the motor here, um, uh, just, just stick it into the, uh, into the body tube there and make sure it's balanced. So you want to make sure you balance the model and that um, you're not tail heavy on boost, otherwise it's, it's uh, very twitchy. You're better off a little bit more nose heavy. If you want to, you can tape the nose weight to the underside of the tip of the nose for the first couple of flights and if the uh, model is super sluggish on landing and the boost is fairly stable it could be that you're a little bit uh, a little bit too nose heavy and you can pull a little bit of weight off so you can do a couple of flights like that um, pulling off a weight a little bit at a time and seeing how it flies and once you're happy with the way it flies then you can uh, take that amount of weight and glue it into the nose cone permanently and then you should be uh, should be ready to go so that's all there is pretty uh, pretty quick and simple hope you enjoyed that thanks